Well, good evening. Welcome to our little theaters of mine. I am so glad you could make it. How are you all doing? Man, I am so pumped. I have waited for this for a long, long time. As you probably know, this is the culmination of over 10 years of work based on a simple idea of following the boy's life in the story of the giving tree. And what a story it has become. Well over 200 people have touched me and added to this script in some way over the years, and it is to them that I give this credit. <laughs> the songs have gone out and by mild estimates have reached over 20,000 people all over the world. And now it has reached you. Unbelievable. So with no further delays, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the worldwide premiere of the musical Leaves. We see on stage a modest street-level studio home in Chicago. Downstage right is an entry door. Beyond that is a desk on which a late 1950s typewriter sits, indicating part of an unseen home office. Several bookshelves cover various walls of the home, all bursting with books. Farther back in the center is a double bed made up tidy and neat. To the left is a small kitchen and the door to the bathroom. Front and center there is a small modest dining table with a full bowl of red apples on it. In the back of the rented apartment, is a large bay window in which we can view part of a very large tree trunk with lightly falling leaves. A calendar hanging on the wall clearly shows it is October 1964. Hi, Em. I'm finally home. Emily? Hi, honey. How'd it go today? Dinner started, but it's going to be a while. I got some more apples. Have one to tide you over. Don't mind if I do. I can't believe they're 17 cents a pound now. Someone's getting rich. I swear I could eat these things all day long and never get tired of them. Well, at least they're good for you. What's for dinner? Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and peas. But I just put the meatloaf in before I took my shower, so it'll be a while. Sounds good. He sneaks in a kiss on the cheek and tries for the lips. She pushes him back in fun. Then laughing, she grabs him, and they briefly kiss. So anything interesting going on at work? Well, Bill's going to be heading up the new branch office of the newspaper. He offered to take me with him and be the front page editor. Really? I can see it now. Shell Silverstein, front page editor. It would be a little more money, but the drive is longer. And with the price of gas plus my time, it seems that we'd be in about the same boat we are now. Sometimes financially, it just seems like we're adrift on a log in the ocean. Well, maybe your last book will get popular, and then we could just live off the royalties, not even have to mess with a real job. Besides, there's a lot of stuff around here that needs doing. When were you planning on getting to the backyard and raking up those leaves? Sorry. It's probably going to have to be this weekend. I swear, Shell. If you don't keep up on that yard, I'm just going to call a gardener and have the damn tree cut down. They'll just cut it down and we'll be stuck with a useless stump in our way. It costs too much to remove the whole thing. Hey, you'll never guess who I ran into at lunch today. Who? You remember me telling you about Brennan? Brennan. Your best friend since you were a little kid playing in the sandbox, how you were inseparable through your school years, and then you lost touch with him when you guys went off to different colleges about a decade ago. <laughs> Vaguely, why? Well, that's who I ran into. Really? Yeah, he's a pastor of a church now out in California. Of all things, can you just see him drinking a beer and then preaching to a crowd of people? <laughs> it was so good to see him, though. We are definitely going to keep in touch. That's great. Maybe I'll finally get to meet this guy. Did he ever get married? He was, but his drinking and his crazy adventures got in the way. It only lasted about two years. He's probably the type that would do better to keep away from the ladies altogether. Why is that? <laughs> Nothing but trouble. Oh, stop. He asked me a very important question, though. Since he's a pastor, he wondered what I thought about love. What about love? Girls, marriage, romance? Yes, but I think he meant it more esoterically. I'm not sure what you mean. Bigger. More globally. Kind of spiritual. What'd you tell him? That's just it. I didn't have an answer. I mean, I feel it, but me, the guy that puts words on a paper for a living, had nothing to say. How come? I honestly don't know, Em. 
but I'm going to give it some thought tonight and write him an answer. I do better on paper anyway. We're going to meet for lunch tomorrow, and I'm going to tell him what I think. Tomorrow. But it's Saturday. The leaves. Emily. He was my best friend for so long. I haven't seen him in ten years. The leaves can wait. Can life wait? I swear, if everyone and everything waited for you, nothing would get done. Your whole life would shoot by, everyone would die, and there you would be, all alone, but finally ready. Well, I have a question for you, too. When do I get to be the top of your list? Answer me that, lover boy. As they eat in silence, he keeps writing things down, then changing his mind and scratching them out. Meanwhile, she keeps trying to think of things to get the conversation started. But each idea she has, she decides against. As they finish dinner, she takes the dishes to the sink. I need to think about this and go right. She picks up one of his doodles, which is a large heart carved in the trunk of a tree with the initials Shell plus Emily, and it softens her a bit. Well, I'm going to bed. If you had any sense, you'd think a while, get a good night's sleep, and write something in the morning. Good night. She goes to kiss him, but he is deep in thought and only puts out his cheek. Feeling guilty, he sits by the alcove for a very short period of time, realizes he can't be angry and creative at the same time. He goes over to the bed. Any room left in there for lover boy? Without turning over, she reaches over and holds back the sheets. He gets in and they lie there in silence. Good night, Emily. I love you. I'm not so sure you even know what it means. Good night. They fall asleep as the theater goes to complete blackout. He tosses and turns, but manages to sink into a deep dream. (laughs) Many, many years ago, in a place called Netafon Dreg. There was a trio of ancients who believed in truth, charity, and love. These ancients looked after their subjects, the growers and the harvesters. The growers planted what we would call trees, which supplied everyone with all the basics for survival. These trees, commonly called giving trees, had a unique ability to adapt to the surroundings of the local areas in which they grew. The harvesters would carefully prune the trees and bring the various harvests back for use. At some point, the harvesters were approached by other groups who were willing to pay high fees for the extremely valuable nutrients found in the root systems. The harvesters became greedy and black of heart. They started cutting down the trees at an alarming rate in order to feed their greed and lust for power. The trees were brutally and hastily cut down, the stumps ripped out of the ground, trees abandoned and left for dead. Many of the owners of the trees were talked into selling them or had them stolen outright. The growers could not keep up with the huge demand for more trees. Soon, tree populations became so low that they were in danger of extinction. During this time, many governments developed intricate laws about the rights of these trees. One law allowed only the pure of heart to bond with and adopt giving trees. If a bonded tree was ever sold, cut down, or mutilated beyond usefulness, abandoned, or left for dead, and later, by any means possible, experienced a renewed growth, bonding was considered completed, and the tree would return to the original owner. This is the remarkable story of one of those trees.
we see a beautiful nature-filled meadow with an enormous tree center stage. A good-sized crude wooden clock hangs fixed throughout the entire show on stage left. Instead of sequential numbers, it displays passages of time with a single hand. Currently, it is straight up, as in 12 noon. It shows day one. special kind of tree. Be very kind to her, as you can no doubt learn many things from this tree. What do you mean? Why is it so special? I can't really tell you the how or the why, but I can tell you, one day you will understand. You see, everyone experiences the tree and what she has to give in their own way. Sit beside me all the day, it's my heart's desire. In the sun I give you shade, in the night a fire. Call on me, I'll be your friend, on the morrow till the end. I am the giving tree. quite complicated, but you can call me Tree. Okay. Tree? How old are you? That's a good question. I really don't think about time the way you do, so I don't know if you'll understand the answer. But some people would say, I'm as old as the hills. Others might say, I'm as new as the morning sun. One day is just about like any other to me. You see, age is not the really important thing. What is important? To grow where you're planted, and to make each day the best it can be for everybody. For as long as you can. Everybody? Everybody. Okay. Tree? Yes, boy? What do you do all day? Well, mostly I watch the world go by. It's fascinating to me to see what people do with their lives. I'd like to help them out, but some people don't believe I'm a living thing. They just treat me like some dead piece of wood. Don't get me wrong. When people get hungry enough, or don't have a place to live, they come to me for food, or to lay in my shade. It doesn't usually last very long, though. Why? People get distracted and start thinking about their problems again. It doesn't take very long, and soon they forget all about me. That's kind of sad. Yes, it is. Boy, can I tell you something? I guess. What? Sometimes I get so sad and lonely. You see, I really love people. You do? Everyone? Even the bad people? There are no bad people, boy. There are just people that do bad things. What if they're not your friends? Even then. But how can you just love everybody? Won't your love get all used up? No, 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 no. I know what you're thinking, though. Ever since I was just a seedling, I've had a great love of people, especially the children. Kids like you make me so happy. It's like I'm all sawdusty inside. Tree, can I be your best friend and come here all the time 
and play in your leaves and bring my friends too. And we can play king of the forest. I would love that. Would it be okay if we climbed up and swung through the branches? That would be so much fun. <laughs> can we eat your apples? Oh, yes, without asking. Oh, boy. I'll be back tomorrow, Tree. Okay. And I'll bring my friends. That would be wonderful. I can hardly wait. Bye, Tree. Goodbye, boy. I love you. I love you, too. 